think that there is a diagnosis of neurogenic frozen shoulder that is probably underdiagnosed. I have a patient right now, which I can't speak to the end story yet, but she has had five cortisone shots over the period of two years. She has never responded to a single one of them, and no one has thought twice to reconsider the diagnosis. Um, well, she has overtly obvious reproduction of her chief complaint symptoms with neurodynamic testing. Uh, if you look at the different like pain diagrams, uh, like lit in the literature, like where these different clinical conditions um, present in terms of pain distribution and quality, frozen shoulder often creates pain that radiates down the arm to the hand. And they often will report uh, pins, needles, or tingling sensations in the hand. So you got to think to yourself, is that actually the frozen shoulder doing that? Or do they actually just have a neurodynamic component to their frozen shoulder? Or that might be one of the primary underlying mechanisms of why people get frozen shoulder. So um, to me, like this fits so perfectly with a neurodynamic dysfunction that's causing your pain, but no one is evaluating this. Like no one's even doing an exam. They just say she has really painful limitation of range of motion. What were the other findings? Um, so if you put all those exam findings together, she like she does not have a standard, a true, yeah, yeah, a true, true frozen, frozen shoulder. shoulder. So um, basically my suggestion would be that that's probably the patient with a primary neurodynamic component to the frozen shoulder. I'll just say that there's there seems to be a percentage of patients who have a neurodynamic component to their frozen shoulder that if you don't address it, it's going to be really hard to resolve that condition.